Accounting Equation and Excel, Pay Employees Form. Get ready and some coffee because we're going to learn the accounting foundation, the accounting equation with Excel. Here we are in Excel. If you First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet but started in a prior presentation. So if you want to build this entire worksheet from a blank sheet, you may want to begin back there or just build your own worksheet as we go from here or possibly just follow along with good old paper and pencil. If you do have access to this workbook though, three tabs down below example practice blank example in essence answer key the practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can practice the practice problem with less excel formatting the blank tab the one we will be working on was blank but we're basically working within a template at this time adding to that template as needed as we go let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we will be doing looking at a transaction of this time dealing with payroll payroll in essence, should be as easy as any other payment of an expense, simply having two accounts impacted, cash going down, payroll expense going up, similar to paying the utility bill or the supplies, and so on and so forth. However, payroll is typically more complex because of laws and regulations, which could include those related to taxes, remembering that the accounting double entry system is universal. It's the same everywhere, even though we might use different currencies and whatnot, the double entry system is universal. However, there will be differences with laws and regulations, particularly those that have to do with taxes because taxes are not universal. They're gonna be specific to a particular location. As we deal with payroll, I'm gonna be looking at this from the perspective of a United States perspective in general and some of those concepts might apply to other locations as well that have a similar tax type of system or often are going to have some kind of benefits system which will work in a similar way so you can take insights from that as a type of tax also remembering that the general idea of taxes is an old idea whatever the tax system that is being used has been used before it's just a question of where am I located and what's the tax system that they're applying in that particular uh, location. So whenever you look at taxes on other locations, you'll probably see similarities and say, oh, I can see where that kind of applies to a different place here. So for example, in the United States, we have a sales tax on the state side, an income tax on the federal side. The sales tax might look familiar when we're thinking about about other countries that might have a federal sales tax. When we look at payroll, we might not have the same kind of uh, social security systems and Medicare or whatnot. However, we could have a similar benefit structure in that before you get your money, the government is going to force the employer to be the one that takes the money out of your paycheck and pay for the benefits, basically, which will be a stand, which will possibly be fairly common. All right, so that's going to be the idea. And to do that, we're going to build a worksheet over here to give a general idea of how we're going to construct a, a journal entry. Now, also remember that if you're in practice working with accounting software, payroll is going to be a specialty kind of area. You want to think deeply and say, okay, what kind of clients do I want to pick up? And if I'm dealing with payroll, how do I want to deal with payroll? In other words, do you want to specialize on small clients that don't have payroll because they're sole proprietorships or something like that? In which case, it'll be easier to automate the process because you don't have to deal with the payroll taxes less costly as well. Because in the United States, even with few employees, you're possibly going to need more support from a software perspective at least 
to pay for the payroll taxes. It's usually uh, going to be an, an, a higher price to do that, and it messes up your cash-based system because, as we will see, there will be an accrual component. Or if you take on payroll, do you want to work with an external payroll provider generally who handles the payroll and you just handle the, the input of that data into the accounting system from a bookkeeping side, possibly being able to remain more on a cash based type system, even though you have accrual components related to uh, the payroll? Or do you want to specialize in payroll, taking on payroll, doing the payroll within, say, an accounting system and setting up the added price to do that for the software as part of your your package you're, that you're going to be charging for and if you do that then you want to know what kind of payroll are, are you picking up payroll specific to a particular location how many people are you willing to basically be taking on what size of company do you want to take on because if you deal with multiple states for example in the united states that's going to be more complex if you deal with multiple countries say in europe or something like that the taxes are going to be more complex because the, the tax system is going to be different from location to, to location. So those are just some things to keep in mind. Let's go to the blank tab so we can work this thing out. So I'm gonna go all the way to the, to the right and just build a worksheet just to give a simulation of like a payroll process. So I'm gonna make a skinny AX to start with. I'm gonna put my cursor on this skinny over here to make it the same size. Home tab, format painter will format paint the AX. And then we're gonna go into uh, let's say we go into here. I'm going to say this is an AY3. I'm going to say this is going to be my employees. And so I'm going to build a little kind of register to get an idea of the payroll that's going to be processed. This is a register kind of report that if you were using accounting software like a QuickBooks might be generated within the software, although being more complex oftentimes. And if you do payroll externally, this is the type of report that they might provide you with on a periodic basis as payroll is processed, as well as on a quarterly uh, basis, monthly basis, possibly and yearly basis. So we're going to have the gross pay. I'm going to put these on two different lines. I'm going to have the FIT. So for the United States, that's called the federal income tax, not on the government, not on the company side. This is the federal income tax that is responsible by the employee to pay. And we, the employer, however, are forced to collect some of the federal income tax based on information provided to us by the employee with the W-4 typically. Social security, security. So, do, do, do. so this is gonna be kind of like, uh, a, it's almost becoming a national, <laughs> like retirement kind of program rather than a safety net program that they pay into and possibly get benefits at retirement medicare so once again the idea is it's not being paid by the employer but the employee at least the, this is the employee side there will be an employer side medicare similar situation medical benefits provided by the government after a certain age and then benefits could be other types of benefits that we might might have such as maybe a 401k plan which gives you uh, money that puts into a retirement plan with some tax savings benefits in the united states but it could be any other thing that we take out of the check and pay on the employee's behalf you might have other things like li like like uh, if someone put a lien on you or you had an employee that was divorced or something and the court case said that that you had to take money out of their paycheck and pay it to their ex or something like that same kind of idea we'd have to take it out of their check before they get it and pay it to whoever we need to have them uh, pay it to all right so let's go ahead and make this black and white for a header home tab fonts group we'll make it black and uh white Doot -doot. let's center it center it i'm going to make this black and white but i'm not going to center it making that black and white and then I'm just going to generically call this employee one, EMP one, and EMP two. An EMP, isn't that the kind of thing, the EMP that you, if you set off an EMP, then it, all the electrical stuff is gone? But that's not what I mean. I mean e EMP like e employee. 
So let's say employee E1, let's just imagine that whatever payroll process we're paying, which might happen on either a weekly basis typically, or a bi-weekly basis, or a semi-monthly basis, or on a monthly basis, those are the typical pay terms that we have. Let's say they get $5,000. So $5,000 is their pay for that period. Now the federal income tax is not something that's easily calculated as a percent because it's not a flat tax, but it's based on all this other crazy stuff that we would get as the employer from the W-4. I'm just gonna simplify it here and say that it comes out to be 0.15%. So, so I took that times 0.15. And so we're gonna say that we're gonna take out federal income tax of 750. That's federal income tax not owed by the employer, technically being paid, we assume, by the employee here. The employer is just made as the vehicle of the collection agency, basically by the government, forcing the employer to take the money out. The employer does so, however, based on information provided by the employee. Now, the Social Security is more straightforward because it basically is a flat tax, although it has a cap on it. Therefore, it's easier to calculate. It's just going to be 0.062. It might change as time passes, but that's where it is at this point in time. And then the Medicare, same thing. 5,000 times 0.0145 is the current uh, rate, or the rate we'll be using at least. The benefits, again, could differ depending on what kind of benefits are being offered. So I'm just going to put the benefits in here and say it looks like this is going into the 401k plan. And we said we want to put uh, times 0.035 into the 401k plan. So that means the net check is going to be the total pay minus the amount that we took out to pay the employee one federal income tax, FIT, minus what they're going to pay to Social Security, minus what they're going to pay to Medicare, minus what they're going to pay to the benefits, meaning instead of us giving them a check of 5,000 and then they write a check or send electronic transfers to these four for these four bills in essence we are just going to take it and pay it for them paying them instead of 5,000 3,693 and pay these items to whoever they owe it to the government in particular generally on their behalf all right and you might say well what if the employee doesn't want us to do that well, sometimes we're required to do that. That would be involuntary withholdings like taxes. And sometimes it would be a benefit that we are providing to the employee, which would be voluntary uh, uh, benefits, right? So then the next one, we're going to say, let's say that employee two was 6250. We're just going to use the same rates here. So what did I say? The FIT was 15%. So I can just copy this down. Let's select all of this and just copy it down. All right, so that's going to be 15% here, Social Security 0.062, Medicare 0.0145, benefits at 0.035, net check 6,250 minus the 938 minus the 388 minus the 91, and so on and so forth. All right, so the total, let's total this up. Now, this is interesting because you can kind of think of the transaction as though all of your employees were the equivalent of one employee from a transaction standpoint. In other words, uh, if I sum this up, sum it up and then I'll talk about it. Sum it up, little darling, sum it up, and then we'll copy it across. And then you could double check that over here by saying it should, the total should be this, minus this, minus this, minus this, minus this. So it comes out to the same number. That makes sense. Let's make this blue and bordered. I'm going to right click on it and then colors. If you don't have that blue, that's my data input blue I typically use. So you can go into the more color wheel standard tab. I use that blue right there. Why? I don't know. I've just been accustomed to do it. The Excel is fun guy I used to do that, but then he stopped doing that. But then I keep doing it because I like that blue. And then I'm going to go to this blue and do that. Let's put an underline here to make it fancy like pleats in someone's pansies. And so there we go. Okay, <clears throat> so so now when I do the, the journal entry, if I was to do the journal entry within the accounting software, 
it would make two checks, right? Or two electronic transfers, however you want to call it, still would be called like a check form, payroll check form, because it's decreasing the checking account for 3,693 and 4,616. Uh, and, and then I would have the detail that I would need in order to do my payroll reporting, which in the United States is done on a quarterly basis for the 941s, yearly basis for the 940 and and the w2s and the and the w3 and so on and so forth however if this was being done by an external provider such as like an adp or a paychex and i just need to get it into my books to get the financial statements correct not in order to be in compliance with all the other reporting requirements because that's being done by the third party provider i don't need all the detail from every particular employee I can think of all the employees as though they are all one big employee. And you can see I, I have a similar transaction, right? So I'd say gross pay is going to go up from the accounting equation. That's going to be the expense. And then I have FIT, Social Security, and benefits. Those are the things that I took from them that I have not yet paid to the government on their behalf. Therefore, they are liabilities. Why? Because they earned 11250 this is the part of that 11250 i didn't pay to them but are withholding and will pay to their vendors on their behalf and then the net check the decrease to the cash is uh 8308 now if i was to do that however i still kind of have an issue because this 8308 is going to show up on my bank statement as two separate checks so, so, so sometimes companies will, will have a separate payroll account so that they can make sure that they reconcile the payroll properly, transferring money into the checking account for payroll and then processing the payroll so that they make sure that they, they have everything tied out correctly. But that's, th that's that, right? So we're going to record it, the two employees as though they are, in essence, one employee with one journal entry into our transaction but we could record it with two separate transactions one for each uh one for each employee and again it'll depend on the type of software you're using as to which one it will show up on in your books so by the way uh not having payroll done within your accounting system like a quickbooks or uh or a zero means that your accounting system is going to be a lot less transactions a lot cleaner because payroll includes all of these other transactions that are needed in order to be in compliance with reporting to the employee reporting to the government and dealing with the payroll taxes so again that's another thing to just keep in mind that if you had a third party provider do that stuff then then your your bookkeeping system will have less data in it right you're not going to have all the details because that'll be in the external reports generally okay in any case Let's go to the, uh, em we're not done yet, employer taxes, because now though, those are the taxes paid by the employee, but we also have employer taxes in the United States. And I'm going to say that basically we're going to be matching the Social Security and Medicare. So that means the employer has to also pay their portion of Social Security and Medicare and also federal unemployment tax, FUTA tax i know people laugh when i say that but futa tax is the, what they call it and uh i won't deal with futa right now though and then but the federal income tax is solely the employee tax we just take it out of their check social security and medicare has an employee and employer portion acting similar to like a 401k plan where we put money in as and match the employee uh er or employee that puts money in even though it's not exactly the same as a 401k plan because social security is bankrupt, but, <laughs> and hopefully your 401k plan isn't, but we don't want to get into that. That's another story for another time. We don't need, we don't need to get into that right now. And so let, we're going to say then employee one, employee two and total. And so we're just going to match then the social security and medicare so now we the employer are paying taxes not on our income tax as would typically be the case for a, f a federal income tax system we're actually paying taxes on an expense to us we're paying taxes 
on the on the expense that we're paying to the employees, which is kind of funny, but that's how it works, man. That's how. Why does it work that way? Because that's the way the government set it up. Because they're crazy. Government did some crazy stuff, and that's where we're at. We're gonna sum this up. We'll copy it across, and then we'll total it over this way. Total equals the sum of these two, and then we can sum this down, and then I'll sum it up this way. Boom. Let's make this black, white, center, home tab, font group, black, white, center. And let's make this blue and bordered. And we'll make this blue and bordered. All right. So that means that, so if I think about what's going to happen to my, my taxes, let's just calculate the total increase to payroll liabilities. Okay, so so that what I'm looking at is I'm saying, okay, the federal income tax is only paid by the employee. I'm going to pull this down here. Is only paid by the employee, but we withheld it from them, meaning that we took it out of their check. And then the Social Security and Medicare is paid by, there's an employee and employer portion to it. So that means that after we process the payroll, we're going to have 1,688 of federal income taxes that we took out of the employee's wages and need to pay to the government. So it's going to be a liability. And then Social Security and Medicare, we had 698 that we took out of the employee checks, similar to the FIT, and 698 that we matched that we have to pay. Therefore, the liability is going to go up by 1395 that we have to pay to the government for Social Security. Same with Medicare. This is the employee portion plus the employer portion. And then we also have uh, the benefits that, that, we, that would be like the 401k plan. And there could be a matching component to that, but I'm just going to say the benefits are the uh, employee that we paid on their behalf. So that means that the total increase in payroll liabilities is going to be these numbers here. So let's make this black and white. We'll make it black and white. Let's center it. Let's put a total over here. Total, total. And we'll sum it up this away, that away. And we'll make this black and white. Go black, white. Let's make this blue and bordered bordered and blue and let's pull this one over here so it's all i don't need that space over there and then we'll make this black and white and by the way i shouldn't have stuff over here i'm going to delete that that should be gone on your side all right so now so given all that let's let's imagine then what would the journal entry look like Let's imagine that, that we got this from an external payroll provider. And again, I'm just going to record it all the employees as though in essence, they're one employee. Now I'm first going to look at it in terms of debits and credits, because this is an area where the, the transaction is complex enough that debits and credits are actually easier to use. And then I'll convert that to, to our accounting equation. You might not be comfortable with that because we're working in terms of the accounting equation, not debits and credits, but I, I think it's the easiest way to see it. So, so let's take a look at it. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to make a skinny over here. Let's make a skinny and we'll put that over here. Skinny B G. All right. So this is going to be our journal entry. Let's call it, let's just name it that we'll call it a journal journal entry. And then we're going to say, I'm going to say this is the debit and this is going to be bracketed credit, which I'll make negative and bracketed. Let's put some black and white around that and we'll center this one. And then we're going to say, okay, so what's going to happen on this? We're going to have payroll expense. And that's going to go up by the total amount that they earned. Again, I'm combining them together. I could put them on there separately as two separate checks, but I'm going to treat them as though they're one big employee because that's the easiest thing to do if I'm just trying to get the financial statements correct. Now, if it wasn't for payroll taxes and benefits and withholdings, the other side would just be cash, right? <laughs> 
and it would be just like paying the utility bill. It'd be really easy. But no, I gotta I gotta withhold all this stuff. So I'm just gonna I could put this into different categories like FIT liability, Social Security liability, benefits liability, uh, Medicare liability. But I'm just gonna put it all into one liability account: payroll liability, liability, liab liability. Now you might have a couple because you might say I'm gonna pay the taxes to the government. So you might put those here in the benefits into a separate one, or you might have a different one for each category. It depends how you want to do it. But the general idea is that the liabilities are going to be going up for the amounts that we took out of the check and didn't pay to the employee, even though they earned that money, because we're going to pay it to people that they owe on their behalf, which they may or may not be happy with. But it is what it is. That's the way we have to do it because wait a sec i took in the total here that's too big that goes from here not including it so it includes the fit social security medicare and the benefits not the net check all right so then the the so then the checking or cash we'll just call it is going to go down by the difference which is going to be that 8308 but instead of picking it up here i'm going to use the good old plug formula because in debit and credit format like in the accounting equation it balances debits have to equal the credit so i'm going to say negative sum of these two and we get the 8308 now we're not quite done you would think we're done there but no because we also have the employer part that we have to pay so we're also going to have what we call payroll tax expense, which is going to be equal to the employer part, 861. And then payroll liabilities is also going to go up by the 861 because their earnings over here triggered taxes to us that we have to pay. Now, you might say, hey, look, what about these taxes? Why aren't these taxes in this number for payroll taxes because i included them in payroll expense shouldn't payroll expense be simply the 8308 and then all of this should be part of payroll taxes with this and the answer is no why is the answer no because these payroll taxes are not our payroll taxes we've just been used to to be the collection agency of the government to force the employees to pay their taxes right Whereas this tax is levied on us over and above the payroll. So the employees earned this amount of money. They had to pay this amount in taxes and benefits and whatnot, which we had to take from them, but in theory is paid out of their check. Whereas this amount is our payroll tax because we had to pay it over and above the earnings of the, of the employee. All right, so that's how it works. So that's the debits and credits of it. Let's make this, hopefully I got that right. Let's make this black or blue and bordered. Blue and bordered. And so the payroll liabilities, if I add these two up, adds up to 3803, which is our total down here. So that makes sense. That's what should be in the total payroll liability after we make the journal entry. All right, so now let's just record this journal entry in terms of, of uh of our accounting equation so i'm going to go i'm going to go back over here and just say all right what's it going to look like for the accounting from an accounting equation perspective 630 we're going to say we pay uh employees pay employees and i'll do them with two two entries one's going to be the pay employees the other's going to be payroll tax they happen at the same time but I'm gonna think of them differently, just like we saw in the journal entry. So when we pay the employees, what, what happens? Well, let's think about the expense first. They earned ex whatever they earned, and that's gonna be a payroll expense to us. So we're gonna say they earned in total between all of our employees, the total of 11,250. That's what they earned, but they're not gonna get 11,250 because we had to take from them taxes and benefits which we're going to put into a liability because we don't get to keep that money we have to pay it on their behalf to whoever we got to pay it to such as the government so this is going to be equals the sum let's say of 
the amount that we had to pay. So that's going to be this amount, FIT, Social Security, Medicare, and the benefits. Boom. And that means that they're going to get, how much are they going to actually get then? They're going to get equal, cash is going to go down by the payroll expense minus the payroll liability, which is that 8308. I need to make that negative though, because cash is going to go down for us. So I'm going to select this whole thing. Let's do it. Well, let's do it right here. Put a negative in brackets around this bad doggy. And there's the 8308. 8308 is 8308. That makes sense. Let's put uh, that's so now let's do that. Let's put zeros across the rest of it. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Zeros across the board uh, to to make to fill this bit in. And I'm not going to put a total in place yet. I'm going to record the second one because these two happen at the same time. So I'm going to un underline. I'm going to un underline all this and I'll record the payroll liability right under it. So I'm gonna un-underline, remove the underline, that is. And then the payroll liability is also gonna increase. Well, I'm gonna call that, uh, see how I have payroll expense. I'm gonna add another one here next to payroll expense by selecting the entire column of AG, right-clicking on it and insert, and we'll call this payroll taxes and this is going to be equal to our portion of the payroll tax and that's going to be the 861 and that's going to also increase the other side of that is on the liability side and so i'm going to say this is going to be negative oh wait not negative just equals uh 861 ba boom all right, I think that's right. We'll double check it. If I got it wrong, the double entry accounting system will tell us. That's why we use it, man. We ain't just winging it over here. We got the double entry accounting system backing us up. And they better back us up because, uh, because, because, I don't, I forgot what I was going to say. I don't know. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Let's say, let's copy this down. Let's copy it down. I'm going to say, copy this down to see if it balances out. And okay. So there we have that do it. Okay. And here's, the, here's the, did it work? No, something is wrong on both of them for crying out loud. All right. That's okay. Totally did that on purpose. So now that we can figure out, uh, now we can figure out the double entry accounting system, right? Totally did that on purpose, man. So let's go over here and say, I think uh, the expenses need to be negative. So that's going to be one of our problems here because the expenses need to be uh, going down. So I'm going to say the payroll expense should be a negative and then the payroll taxes need to be a negative, bringing total equity down, just like we saw with our prior expenses and other examples. Now, I think I also have a problem in that I used a formula then to calculate the cash in this case. So the cash was calculated. So let's say uh, the cash, let's pick it up this way. I'm gonna say the cash is gonna be equal to, and let's pick it up from our worksheet this time. Uh, the net cash goes down by that 8308. And that needs to be a negative because it's a decrease to cash. So I'm gonna say that's gonna be a negative to cash. All right, that one's fixed. So cash goes down by 38308 on the asset side. Liability goes up by the 2942. Uh, and then the uh, payroll is going to be the 11250, bringing up expenses that brings down total equity. Now, on the liabilities on this side, this liability number should be going up. So I'm going to say this is going to be negative of this number and, and that should balance that back out so now on the payroll taxes so that means the on the pay on the payroll we had cash asset going down 8308 liabilities going up uh, 92942 and equity which is the payroll expense expenses going up which brings total equity down 11250 and then our taxes that we had to pay over and above 
liabilities going up for payroll taxes, 861, and then the payroll tax expense, which would increase the expense but bring down equity of 861. And so that means that our total here for the payroll liability, let's let's put a balance in place. Let's put a balance, balance. And so I'll sum this up. Uh, let's say this equals the SUM of the prior balance, which was up here summing these three now because we had two transactions for our payroll. Copy that. I'm going to paste that across here, pasting it formulas only, pasting it here, formulas only, pasting it here, formulas only. And then I'm going to get rid of the underlines on this bottom one underlines be gone and then we'll put the underlines up on the top one here's where the underlines should go to make it look proper all right underlines properly placed and then i'm going to copy this one down so now we're going to say let's copy this down and we'll copy this down and we'll copy this down and so let's put an underline under these so now we're at a total of the 41,692 of total assets liabilities at the 3803 which are the payroll liabilities that should match what we got on our worksheet 3803 here so I think that is correct and then the equity is currently at the 37889